Hello and welcome to your cash flow getting started video. I'm going to give you a short introduction to cash flow and also take you through a few basic steps to setting up your accounting package. Your first port of call to log in is going to be cashflow.com. If you haven't already set up an account, you can go to sign up and click on cashflow accounts and payroll. This will take you through a very simple sign up process. If you've already created your account, simply head to login and click the cashflow login. At this point, you'll be asked to enter your username and password and also your memorable word. The first thing you'll see when you log in is your company dashboard. And your first task is to head to the settings menu and enter some additional details about your company. If we head to settings, we can go up to the company details and just check that you've got as much information as possible on this screen, your company name, address, and you've also filled out the options for your business type and VAT registration as well. Once this is done, feel free to explore the settings menu. This gives you various options to manage your subscription, the emails you receive from Cashflow, and also change the way that Cashflow looks and feels. You've also got options to import and delete data into the Cashflow account. And if you'd like to, you can give access to your accountant at this point as well. The first thing we're going to do in this video is to create our first customer. If we head to the customers tab on the left hand side, we can click to create a customer. We're going to get asked for the customer name and Cashflow will also create a unique customer code. We can change that if we'd like to. We can select the source of our customer and also select which country they are a resident of. Once we've entered the details of the customer, we're gonna be prompted to either create a new invoice or quote for the customer, or simply return to the main page. At the moment, we'll return to the main page. Click to create the customer. And at this point, we've got various options along the top here to customize the details of this customer. So we've got things like, for instance, the address and contact details. We've got various options for the customer, so we can choose the particular email template they receive, a PDF theme, so if there's a certain way that you'd like this customer's invoices to appear, for example, you can alter it here. Their default purchase order, different payment terms and discounts as well. If there's any fields you'd like to add to this screen, you can simply use the additional customer fields option. If we go to invoices and stats, we're going to be shown all the invoices, quotes, reoccurring invoices and advanced payments that are attached to that customer. At this point, if you'd like to, you can also download a purchase history or a statement for that customer as well. We've also got an option for various forms and envelopes that be, can be created with those customer's details attached. Once we're happy, we'll click on update and finalize that customer's details. If we head back to the customer screen, you'll see that the customer is now listed and we've got various options to, for instance, email statements for the customers and we can create various filters if we need to as well once we've added a few more. The next step once we've created our customer is to generate our first invoice. Now you can go straight to generating an invoice, alternatively you can go through generating a quotation to invoice, whatever you'd like to do. For the purpose of the video we're going to generate a quotation first and then convert it to an invoice. The process is exactly the same though if you do simply want to go straight to creating an invoice. We'll hit create a quote and we're going to be given a blank quotation. This is the first quote I've created, click number one. Now we can give it a unique reference number. There's our customer. If we'd like to add a new customer at this point we can simply click the plus button and we'll be able to very quickly add a new customer in there. The address will pre-populate, the date of the quotation, currency and the particular category that we've chosen. And we can then add some items to that quotation. We'll click on add line item. We've only got a few different categories set up at the moment. If we choose this particular sales code, we can add in a quantity, a description, as much text in there as you need. And we're going to put in our price. Add as many different line items as you need. And if you'd like to annotate any of those items, you can click to add a comment and these can be moved around the quotation here. Once we're happy with that, we can click on save. At this point, the quotation has been saved. We can add any notes and files to the quotation at the bottom of the screen. And then we can then go to print 
email or copy this particular quotation. We've got the options at the top of the screen here to print, email and create a duplicate. Alternatively, if we're happy with the quotation, we can simply move to convert it to an invoice. You'll see the screen will now change to an invoice and on the left hand side we've now moved down to our invoices tab. At this point we can choose to edit the invoice, again we can copy it to create a duplicate in the same format or we've got the option to email and print. For the purpose of the video we're going to now email this invoice to our customer. If we click to email the screen will appear, we can choose what attachments we'd like on the email so we've got our invoice attached already. We can add additional attachments if we need to, and we can choose the email template that we'd like to use for that customer. If we just click on the invoice quickly, we can get a preview of the invoice that we are sending out to the customer as well. Once we're happy, we can click on send and the invoice will be emailed directly to the customer. At this point, we've also got the option to add payment to the invoice as well. If you click the add payment button, You've got the option to select the amount, the date it's been paid, the account that it's heading into, and the method of payment as well. If we head back to our invoices screen, you'll see our invoice now appears on there. Again, we've got options at the bottom of the page to filter if we've got a number of invoices added to the system. And we can also sort the invoice by clicking on the column heading at the top as well. So we've now added a customer and created our first invoice. Next job to do is to set up our bank feeds within Cashflow. So if we head to the bank area, you'll see we've already got a current account set up at the moment on the system. We can add as many bank accounts as we need to by using the add new account option in the top right hand corner of the screen. Alternatively, we can use the bank account we have already. What we're going to do is head to the bank feeds area and we're going to click to activate our bank feeds. We're going to be taken through a three step process to activate bank feeds. This is going to allow us to import our transactions directly from our bank account into cash flow. First step is to locate your bank. We're going to use a demonstration account for the video. Once we've entered our online banking login credentials, we can click to log in. The next step after this is to select a particular account that you would like to attach to your account in cash flow. Obviously under your online banking you may have more than one bank account. Once the link has been created, we'll select our bank account. And at this point we've got the option to import our first lot of transactions. We'll select a date range, we'll go back nice and far so we get some good data. And we're going to load our transactions. At this point, we're going to be presented with our first lot of transactions. Now, obviously, I've gone back quite a few years to give you some transactions here. Transactions are going to appear in front of you, and you're then going to have the option to actually match that transaction to an existing record within cash flow or actually create a new record from the bank feeds area. I'll very quickly show you how that works. We've got a transaction here of £150 coming in. We're going to click to match. So we can choose to match that to an existing invoice that we've got in the system. Alternatively, we can click to create and we can create a brand new invoice from that transaction. Once we've matched all of our transactions, we can simply click to import now and we will import those transactions straight into the cash flow system. At this point, you've also got the option to tailor some matching rules. So if we create a matching rule, we can actually ask Cashflow to automatically suggest what to do when you import your bank feed data and match those transactions for you. For instance, when we've got money in, we can ask Cashflow to search for a particular customer or particular amount. We can then actually ask the system to create, for instance, an invoice for a particular customer with a particular sales code, and we can then give the rule a name so that we can recognize it the next time. Once Cashflow has actually automatically assigned these transactions, it will give you the opportunity to approve those in the screen that we were in earlier. This will not be done completely automatically for you, so as you retain some control over the process. 
Once bank feeds are enabled, if we go back to our bank screen, you'll see our bank feeds option has now changed to import rather than activate. If you'd like to view any transactions assigned to that account, you can simply click to view or add from here. So we've set up our first customer, we've created our first invoice, and we've now got our bank feeds linked to cash flow to directly import our transactions. The next step is to explore the various integrations that Cashflow offers to make running your business even easier. If you head to the Cashflow website and select Apps under the Small Business Owners tab, you'll be able to view our featured applications and the latest apps that we now integrate with, as well as browsing all of our integrations by category. You can, for instance, start taking online payments using GoCardless, bringing your receipts directly into Cashflow using Receipt Bank, or if you'd like to do some forecasting, you can use a fantastic integration with GearShift. Please feel free to explore the apps on our website. Final step to setting up our cash flow account is our payroll. Some of you may not need to use the payroll functionality in cash flow. However, if you do, you can simply select the payroll tab down at the bottom here, and you can select that you are new to payroll. When you do this, you'll be taken to a payroll registration screen. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to log into an existing account. And you'll be taken into Cashflow Payroll. This is a fantastic, easy to use payroll system for an unlimited number of employees. You can have as many companies on here as you'd like. And the system is fully compliant with real-time information and will also allow your business to remain compliant with automatic enrollment as well. You can run a weekly or monthly payroll on the system, and the beauty of it is that it will integrate directly with your Cashflow Accounts package. Simply enter your username and password once, tick that you would like to integrate with Cashflow, and each time that you run a payroll on Cashflow, it will import the information directly into your account. The system is extremely easy to use if you've never run payroll before. If you have any questions about payroll at all, please get in touch with our support team. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Getting Started video. If you have any further questions, please visit our knowledge base on the Cashflow website or contact our support team at support at cashflow.com. Goodbye.